welcome to another video. This time we'll be going over the Tolis A319. Today's service will be from London over to Frankfurt, a nice short flight with this beautiful aircraft. Um, I do have some things to say, to say about it, and this is kind of a review, but also at the same time not really. It's a full flight, but I'll be going over the aspects that I don't like about this aircraft, also the aspects I do like about the aircraft, and I'll showcase some things um, that this aircraft has, such as the menu, even though you've probably seen it many times already. I still want to show it to you guys and give a good explanation of what I've noticed about it. So, um, I am a little sick, so if I do cough once in a while by accident, I apologize. Um, I will tr try to turn off my microphone just in time so you don't have to hear it. But if I do, I really apologize for that. I just want to get this video out um, before um, it's too late. So, the aircraft has been released, I believe, for now a week. I believe it's a week, and I apologize for the background noise as well. But I believe it's about a week now. And um, I've flown this aircraft only once. Or one and a half times. One time fully, one time just um, getting prepared and taking off and then cruising a little bit. And then I decided, nah, I don't want to continue. Um, there's a good reason for that. It's because I'm not really fond of this aircraft. I like it. And it's awesome to have this aircraft. I was really hyped at the beginning of it. But no, having it now and playing around with it, I'm still in love with the flight factor way more than this aircraft. Uh, this aircraft is still nice. It's also nice that it's an A319, so that's one excuse to fly this aircraft. Also, it has IAE engines and charclets if you want them. That gives me two two more excuses for me to fly this aircraft. Um, but overall, I will probably always choose the flight factor over this aircraft. Always. Um, it's just more accurate. And there are a lot of debates about why, why this aircraft should be more realistic than flight factor, but um, I've done my research and I know that flight factor is way more realistic, even though they're missing a lot of features that this aircraft might even have. So, this aircraft may have a lot of click spots, but it doesn't mean those click spots are actually simulated, if that if that makes sense. And I'll demonstrate some of that in a moment. So first let's go ahead and go over to the menu. Um, you can already look at the modeling. The modeling I'm not too awesome with. I think it looks really good. It's recognizable, but it could have been it could be improved, um, especially the engines. The engines were a big complaint. Um, both engine both engine variants were a complaint to everybody. So yeah, you gotta fix that a little bit. They're told us. So they said that you can rescale this, but I don't see any way to rescale it. Um, that's the new update that came out. But yeah, this is the first thing. Auto save. You can turn that on every five minutes however you like and you can also create or create situations and then load them up aircraft configuration you've got your uh, fuel your uh, cargo your passengers and your passenger distribution for the to have accurate zero fuel weight center of gravity or any center of gravity and you can check that here which is very nice and helpful and it's really important for flying once you have your departure runway inserted here it will take that data from nav from your nav data and it can it will give you Oh, good speeds, but I, I use an external model, uh, not Tofcat. I use that too, but then I use another um, calculator that's specifically just for the Airbus. I think that's the most accurate one. Um, I use that to calculate my piece speeds, so I don't really listen to this. The only thing I get from this is the trim. Ground services, external power is currently on. You can use high pressure or low pressure air. You can also have, you have, also, you also have a pushback system here. And, um, here are your doors, they're currently all open. Still work in progress. It's work in progress. Sounds there sound uh three D sound fading. I don't think this is really really working at the moment. I have a feeling it's not. because um, I can still hear all kinds of noises that you shouldn't be hearing from the cockpit. But whatever. Um and most of this is engine type auto and this is set to auto. Um if you're I still can't move this out of the way, it's kinda of retarded. Um, but if you have, let's say, like this livery has IAE in the front of it, uh, it will automatically load the IAE engines. And if it has IAES, it will load the IAE engines with the sharklets. So yeah, that's what this is. Okay, and then settings, here's a lot of settings here as well. Uh, version 1.0.1 is currently the build I have. Um, auto pause off, default transition altitude all this stuff. The Florence kit, if you don't know what this is, is basically the ailerons, they will be used as spoilers when you're landing. So if you land, that means um, 
there's more drag and you are able to land at shorter airfields. That's what the Florence kids, the kid does. It uses your ailerons as spoilers as soon as you land. Alright, all this is still self-explanatory and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the menu um, in a really fast fashion. So let's go ahead and go into the cockpit and this is already my first complaint. It doesn't look really that good. And I don't know what it is. I haven't seen this on anybody else's but I have this weird object around it and I've checked to see if it's like show click spots or anything but nothing's enabled, not even the settings. So I have no idea what this is. Maybe maybe it is a setting but I don't know what it is. So yeah. Another complaint, the systems are not 100% really not really that good. You can already see the clock is functioning. It shouldn't be functioning. Um, so, yeah, some things like that. Uh, that just shouldn't work. Okay, so, yeah. So, first complaint is the cockpit. It really looks, doesn't look well, really well made. It looks really plasticky and bad. Compared to the fly fight, this is absolutely in its alpha phase. Um, but it's alright. Uh, I can live with it if the systems make up for it, and that's where I'll get to in a moment as well. So, let's go ahead and go to the procedures from cold and dark all the way up to, uh, you know, landing. This is part one, where we'll just be doing um, takeoff and climb as usual, and we'll go through the procedures as accurately as possible. So, um, preliminary flows, make sure our masters are off, our most likely normal, gears down, wipers are off. Okay, battery voltage. I can I can already tell that this this voltage system is not accurately simulated, which is fine. But uh, something in the air with that the flight factor does is that ah, uh, it's definitely steady sim. So battery one can come on, battery two can come on. That's good to go. Okay, make sure weather radar is off. Predictive wind shear is off, which it is. External lights are all off, so we can now connect the external power. Brighten all this up. Okay. Yeah. Let's wait for all the displays to come up. With that, we can go into the APU fire test. Let's check the one thing I do want to point out. Here is a lot of these tests are not 100% accurate simulated. Um, like this one, you, when you do the APU fire test, the APU display should also uh, come up. And I'll just demonstrate more with the engine fire test and all that. So, once we get there. Also, another thing, I had to turn this off out of my, uh, myself before starting with the aircraft. This should be off by default. So, tell us if you're watching this, make sure this is off as a cold and dark state. Make sure this is off. Okay. Anyways, so if your fire test has been completed, parking brakes on, active pressure, you need to check, okay, so we need to charge it. You can also tell that the labels are th objects because they're floating in midair, which Fly Factor also has, unfortunately, but they've done a better job at making it seem bright still. Okay, another issue here, I said this to normal, fault lights are not illuminated, they should be because packs can't function, but that's alright. Okay, and we also don't have ground air connected as you guys saw. Let's so make sure it's auto, normal, set these up. Another thing Fly Factor does better is you can actually fine tune this like really close to, like you can fine tune it. This is like three position switches. It's, it just clicks to every indent and that's just not cool. Um, I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. Generator faults are normal. Make sure all white lights are extinguished and cargo temperature selectors are set as required. Okay, recall does not work. No function there, so we can't recall any messages. Make sure, make sure our oxygen pressure is sufficient. Hydraulic quantities are good and engine oil quantities are good. One thing I've noticed when flying this aircraft, I believe the oil quantities, the hydraulic quantities, and the oxygen pressure never change during the flight. Oxygen pressure is fine if it never changes. 
um, but I've noticed that the oil quantity never changes. It's always these values. Same with the hydraulics. Um, they're always the same values. Um, so they haven't modeled that yet, and I'm sure they will in the future, hopefully. Okay, so that's checked. And we can now do load our aircraft. So, I'm gonna see, I'm used to the, the uh, flight factor where you can just go over here and enter everything. But that's fine. We just open this, go to aircraft configuration. Today we have 140 passengers on board. That's pretty much full. Come on, there we go. And we've got, let's see, I think, 2,268. So I'm gonna go and get my calculator out here. Because I'm going to put my exact values in. So we've got a total of 5,686 kilograms minus 2,268 is 3,418. We'll guesstimate, we'll put 38. And we'll put our passengers more in the front. Load these. And our fuel today is 5,400, so we'll put about 5,500. Alright, so we're good there. And close this up. We're not loaded up. So, what we can do is do the overhead scan. So, our goal here is to extinguish all white lights and do a couple of tests. So, cruise supply on auto, ground control on. Another thing is not simulated is the CVR test. You would hear a beeping sound like a deed, but you don't have that, so. No test there, but we'll keep this on. The uh, voice recorder should always be on on the ground when engines are not started. Don't check this. Make sure it's on captain. No white lights. No white lights. These two faults should illuminate, um, but they aren't. So that's a little system limitation again. And our IRS. Make sure the on bat light extinguishes. And again, nothing. Something else that's not simulated is this. Again, only click spots. Nothing you can actually check. So. Strobe lights auto, nav lights on, no smoking, auto, seatbelts on, emergency exit lights arm. Unlike the flight factor, because refueling is not real time here, we're already done with it, we can already turn on our seatbelt signs, so that's fine. Dome lights off, make sure this is off, landing elevation auto, 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 I'll just stay off for now. I'll, everything here is fine, everything here is fine, we'll do a battery test, so. This means ELEC. Battery 1. Okay. Battery 2. Again, not 100% accurate. Simulated, but whatever. Fuel pumps can also come on or to come to auto because, again, we're done with refueling. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. So, engine fire test. Again, not 100% simulated. I want it. Yeah, okay, it doesn't work. So. Make sure all lights ex illuminate, and you hear the sound. This the um, indication here should display way more. In, in the fire test, it will exp display everything, even if it's in its correct state. That makes sense, but the whole message here does not show up. Plus, the engine display should show up here. I would also have to check if the fire light here illuminates, but I can't. Unlike the fire factor, I cannot click and drag um, to see. So that's unfortunate. Okay, test here, same thing, and we're good to go. We make sure that audio switching is normal, but this this is not modeled, so we can't do anything there. Move to here. Another, one thing I've noticed again is if you use CFM engines, this this panel right here will not disappear. It should, because CFM engines does not have this N1 mode, and it's not even simulated anyways. There's nothing that changes it. Just like another click spot. Okay. This again doesn't work, no testing here. So a lot of this is, are just click spots and are not meant to work. That's basically what this is, what this aircraft is all about. This comes on PA, tune, you can't even tune it, and nothing here works either. Okay. Move down to here. Nothing works here. That's all good there, nothing's here. Go and turn train on or the captain's side that we won't see anything at the moment that's fine and we can now move on to our FMS or FMGC or FMGS whatever you want to call it GPS primary loss is normal go get rid of this on both sides MCG menu we go to data 
position monitor, we deselect any nav aids, but this is not simulated on this aircraft, so we're good there. And what we do now, data, aircraft status, make sure our air rack is up to date, make sure our engine type is right, and everything else here is checked. Go to init, we're going from Echo Golf Lima Lima over to Frankfurt. Let's see if our gate gives us our exact precise uh, location. Okay, it does not. What is the line IRS? Alternate today is um, Army Airfield. V spot. Flight number is Speedbird 910. Cost next will be 25, and a cruise level is 330. Next page, we'll enter an assumed zero fuel weight today. First is 58.1, and our block fuel is estimated will be 5.4. Okay. Go to flight plan, enter our departure runway 9 left, via the Delta Echo Tango 1K, insert. Airways, Uniform Lima 6. What, what, something else you will notice about this aircraft is it does not have temporary flight plan. There's no temporary flight plan for this aircraft. So you just everything you enter is just automatically inserted. Uniform Lima 9. Conan. Uniform Lima 6 of 7. B. Zero. That's off. Tango. One eight zero. Two knuckle. Turn. Now we go into arrival. So I think the ILS two five right. I have the Unoko two Romeo. Looks like that's not right. Oh, that's too Zulu then. Looks like we gotta use Nemo. Via. This is where we gotta check charts. Just give me a second. Frankfurt approach I was two five right. And I believe it's a Zulu one that we are using right now. So we're gonna go via Metro Metro. Insert that's in there. Should know this continuities. We're good. Again, flight plan does not work. You cannot go to the first page. Do that. Go back to init page. Enter our wind data. And this is kind of a nice feature that this that this aircraft also supports wind data. So to make it quick, we're going to type this in. Two six eight seventy two. At. But one thing you have to do is put in flight level. Otherwise, we'll read it as three hundred twenty feet. You can't just put three two zero, which is not right. Um, should be able to recognize that it's not flight that it is flight level. Two six zero. Two six zero. And you'll see another bug in just a moment with this page. For one you can you have to press insert in the real aircraft, but you don't do that here. It just automatically in there. See that's what I mean. Ah, uh, so bad. Two six zero at thirty nine I believe it was. At flight level, a manager. 250 at 32 at flight level, 130 
And then last but not least, and you'll see the bug right now, at 18, at 6,000. You'll see it right here. See, it continues putting in these values when you shouldn't have to do that. Next page starts at cock, but there's no, there's, it isn't there. So, Fatty, 279, at 76. Upai, 28476. I'm curious if these entering these winds, these winds actually change the way this aircraft flies. I know in a flight factor it does. It does affect the aircraft's behavior. Um, but I don't know about this aircraft. I think th I remember watching a video saying them, saying that they do change it, but. I don't know. Now go to performance. We'll enter performance. Six thousand. Our elevation here at Heathrow is eighty-three feet, so one thousand five hundred eighty-three plus three thousand eighty-three five hundred eighty. Okay, flaps will be one. Flex temperature is assumed to be sixty-seven today. B1 is 146, 147, and 151. That's what we're, we're assuming today. We're going to do real calculations later once we get our load sheet. Radio can come on. 122.8. decimal 8. VHF1, again, another limitation here. You can only tune one, one at a time. And you can only tune VHF1, VHF2, VOR1, VOR2, and ADS. That's all you can tune. Okay, auto, auto, weather and turbulence. All this is good. Normal. Okay, all this is normal. Thrust lever should be idle. Off, normal. Reset, on, on extended. GBS primary, go away. Flight plan here. Turn this on. Oh, don't tell me that. Okay. HF2. And two zero one one and we'll set this to auto on the report. Okay, we're good there. Alright, now we'll go ahead and get our weather data. So dot metar echo golf lima lima. We're at image one zero zero three. That one time two times. And three times. Okay. Constraints. UR VOR. Ten nautical miles. Set this to seven thousand. Okay. Constraints here as well. Twenty. VOR VOR. Flight directors are on. Okay. Dash dash and dots. So three dots. That's good to go. Alright, another thing that I've noticed is, as you can see here, there's no black screen here to cut off any information behind the aircraft. So this all here should be cut, and you should not be able to see anything here. And that's very annoying. Um, and affects the display. Alright, so, what we'll do now, is we'll go head over to the captain side, we check our oxygen pressure here. Oxygen mass, ox oxygen mass, but that doesn't work. GPWS test doesn't work. Doesn't work. FMA climb and nav blue B1 and B2. Flight director one and two flight level seven zero and QNH set. And here's good. It's all normal. And we can now check our flight plan. So let's go through it. Step through it. Interesting. So it doesn't really clean it up very well. Let's go to in and flight plan. We're going to delete some of these constraints.
there's another bug, so it's not it's not um displaying the play plan very well. But I can recognize it, so we're good there. Head back, go to arc. Hopefully it will will not fly that path, hopefully it will fly waypoint to waypoint. Sorry. And I'll go to this captain side and do the same checks. Everything else here is good. And once we're done, make sure our seatbelt signs on and our fuel pumps are on auto. <coughs> this is where we get our load sheet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to the side here. We'll open up our screen here. It's like flaps one. And this is what it's giving it us. I'm just gonna use this for our trim. So our zero fuel weight trim is 27.2. The zero fuel weight of 60.5. Our block fuel is 5.5. Okay, give me 45 minutes. Got to put this in my calculator here. Takeoff weight is 65.8. So 65,800. Takeoff. Alright, so it is giving us now a flex of 63. One four eight, one four nine, and one five three, and up zero point six. Okay, that is done, and with that we can start the APU. So master switch coming up, and we can start the APU. Starting up. See that one traffic right there is still there. He's been there since the beginning, so he's probably doing a long haul. Prepping for it. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of our ground services. Close all doors as well. We're already at it. So, close, 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 and close. You get the coming on. Extra power coming off. Okay. Let me clear this message again. Make sure slides are all armed. Okay, that's good. Now that the before search is above the line, first let's go ahead and get better pushback ready. Ground to cockpit. Plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you're ready. Oh dear. Alright, so. Lock quick security check checked and entered. Departure briefing is completed. Cockpit preparation is complete. Cam fans are on auto and armed gears are nav mode. Fuel is released with 5.5 tons. And parking bear ref is set to 1003 times 3. The parking brake is on. So it takes the boat line completed. Go we'll and call the pushback truck. Ground to cockpit. Toe is driving up. Alright. Windows and doors are closed. Okay. And their slides are armed. Beacon coming on. Dust levers are idle. Brakes on, trucks are removed. Acupressure is checked in the green. We're good to go. Now we're just waiting for the nose of steering disengage light to illuminate. And then we're ready to go. Oh, 
Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Alright, so then we're ready to push back. Transponder comes on, TA only illuminates. And this is where another bug comes in. This should TA only should extinguish at around one thousand feet. Radio altitude and above, and that's when it should disappear. But it doesn't in this aircraft, and that's a bug. And it annoys me because it's it's in the way. Excuse me. It shouldn't be there. Anyways. Alright, so we're ready to push back. Tap data set. Beacon is on. Radio steering disengage is checked. Windows dies, doors and slides are closed and arm coffee doors closed and locked. Ready for pushback. Okay. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Thank you very much. We're going to start both engines. We're not going to do single engine taxi. I've done it before. It works. I've also done ditching before. Um, meaning the icing procedures works as well. Um, I've seen cross engines start. Um, on YouTube before, should, that should work on this aircraft as well. So, yeah. I'm right, starting engine number two first. to his stabilized starting at number one. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Disconnecting tow, stand by. Okay, both engines are sort of successfully. Let's like to normal. Make sure that our real e cam pops up. There it is. Complete. Pro page comes back to auto. Ground control comes back to auto. NTI is set as required. Tell required. is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. That's we'll see you next on. time and have a safe flight. Wedge from zero, flaps set to one. Spoilers armed. Pitch trim will go on set for takeoff. We set up, up 0 0.6. Okay. Okay, hand signals given. We're good to go. Cam set is checked. Cam door page. Make sure all the sides are still armed. And now there's the after start checklist. Anti ice is off pitch from 0 0.6 up set. Rudder trim 0. You can set is checked. Okay. Bells light come on. Breaking brake come off. Enough time can be started. Brake check. And we're going to do a rudder check. Full right, full left. 
neutral. The reason why I'm doing this now is because there's no pedal disconnect push button, which the flight vector does have. So, again, realism. Okay. So. See, there's no coming traffic. We're good. We'll do a flight control check now. Full up. Down. Neutral. Full right. Full left. Neutral. Flight control check complete. Slow the way down. Okay. Left over here. All right, so flight plan. Eyes flaps are set. V1, V R, V2 are set. Flex temperature is inserted. Heading is set. FMA is checked. Flight instruments are checked. Radar you can now come on to predict your and system one for the weather radar. ADC code has been confirmed and is on. Take off config test. Command wants take off note the before the take off checklist above the line. Take up briefings complete, flight controls are checked, flight instruments are checked, flaps are one plan, one set, you can manual take one of them. Okay, above the lines completed. No traffic on the left. On, 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 extended. Pass, come off. Okay, and for take off, just below the line. Cancel is given, TGST, alright, packs are off. And let's come on. and three and take off. Flex step, address runway, or thrust blue. Spoilers. Okay. Lights come off.
time for us. Pack one coming up. Flaps. Okay, flaps coming up. And after take off checklist. After take off checklist. Then he gears up with flaps are retracted, packs are on, you can always check. Transitional to one set standard. All three. Start tilt a little bit. Put your optimum flight level. Progress. Okay, three, five, six. I'm going to go to report so we can see our top of descent. Stayed on performance here. Thanks, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next.